Right, so hello there everyone today. We're going to be trying to install Windows 10 on this iMac here. So this is a 2006 model iMac. It's a early 2006, but it's got the CPU upgraded. I upgraded the CPU from the 32-bit Core Duo processor to the 64-bit Core 2 Duo processor. And I also upgraded the firmware. So it basically acts like a late 2006 machine. That's pretty useful because it allows me to put more than two gigabytes of memory in this machine. And it also allows me to install extra versions of Mac OS, I think up to 10 point, unofficially up to 10.11, I believe runs on these. But yeah, I mean, it has graphic issues. The maximum I've been able to get on this machine is 10.8. But we're not gonna be trying that today. We're gonna to be trying to see how well Windows 10 runs on this 14 year old iMac. So I've got the Windows 10 DVD there. For some weird reason, I can't get this machine to work with any sort of USB drive that I make of Windows 10. I've tried making it on a bootcamp machine. It wouldn't want to do it. I've tried making it through a PC. Still wouldn't want to do it. So we've had to resort to using a DVD. And even then, it's still difficult to boot it. Of course, we're going to be doing this without the without bootcamp because it will not work with it. It will only only works with Windows 7, I believe, officially up. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. So, fire it up. And let it just read the disk. So I'm currently holding the option key down on the keyboard to get the boot menu up. We go with the option for Windows then, so we just select the installer. So one thing I do want to point out as well is that quite often on these machines, if you just push the enter key and just try and boot it, as you can see, it's just doing its thing there. Yeah, if you just push the enter key and just try and boot it normally, what you'll actually get is you'll get this this weird CD-ROM boot type. There we go. So if you try and push the one or two key on the keyboard, absolutely nothing happens. So what you've got to actually do is you've got to, before you, uh, it's quite hard to describe. So what you've actually got to do to get past that is actually select the installer from the boot menu, push, the, push and hold the one key, and then continuously just mash the enter button until you get it to actually start booting. Okay, so I'll try and point out what I mean by that. So let's just select the Windows installer there, push and hold down the one key, and then literally continuously mash the enter key as fast as you can until you get the Windows start up screen. So just like that. Actually as fast as you can. we go and now we're booting from the DVD so I believe this is caused by I think it's a missing keyboard driver or something that is slipstreamed into the DVD officially there is a way to make a custom DVD that gets past that but to be honest this little trick I found to be much more convenient I know it's not maybe the most professional way to do it but it works Okay, so not gonna lie, that did take quite a while to boot into that. I believe it's because I'm using a DVD though. I'm so used to using flash drives and the network to install these operating systems. So we're finally there. We're gonna choose our keyboard layout. It's a bit difficult to do with this mighty mouse about any drivers on it. And then we're just gonna wait for the setup to start. So yeah, I forgot to mention the specification of this machine in its entirety. It's got four gigabytes of RAM memory, 320 gigabyte hard drive. And I think it's got some sort of an AMD Radeon graphics card. I think it's the X1600, I believe. It does have a couple of issues running Windows 10, more specifically the most modern versions. I believe that the graphics are quite glitchy on anything above 1809, I think. So we're using 1607 long-term servicing branch, the enterprise version here. I found that works quite well. It's got nice long support and works quite well on older machines. So just accept whatever license terms there are. 
and there's nothing important on this machine, so we're just gonna wipe everything. There you go, make a new partition, let that do its thing. And there we go, it's off. So yeah, I believe it also is possible to dual boot Mac OS with Windows 10 on these machines as well. It's a bit more complicated to do without boot camp. I have only tried it once, but I definitely have managed to get it to work in the past, and I'll probably do a guide on that for quite soon. So we're just gonna let this run through, see what happens. Of course, one other thing I'd like to mention as well was this being an iMac, we do need to have the specialized bootcamp support software in order to make sure all the Apple specific functions, especially on the keyboard and all the drivers also install. So in order to get this working properly, we need to download version 4.0.4033. I'm just gonna download that using this MacBook here. And of course it's not gonna work. Okay, so I found an alternate place to download it. Of course, it's not officially from Apple, but you know what they're like with old software and all of that. And as you can see now, we're downloading the software. So we're just gonna let this download. We're gonna pop this onto a flash drive, ready to install on the machine. Okay, so the installation progress over on the iMac is going pretty smoothly. Didn't take too long, that surprisingly, from a DVD. And it should be rebooting by itself any moment now. There we go. I'm just gonna let that do its thing. And just see what happens. And that's probably because I've left the goddamn disc in the drive, haven't I? Oh, for God's sake, why doesn't anything go right? Okay, so there we go. Let's see what it's going to do. Something's happening, and there we go. Just get that exposure down a bit there we go so we're going to be booting into Windows 10 now okay so it's just now getting the devices ready it's probably installing a load of drivers as well while we speak or whatever drivers I guess it can install without the support software that would be but yeah this normally takes quite a while to complete so we'll be back when that's done okay so the setup appears to be complete now so this first thing we can definitely see is it's definitely got a Wi-Fi adapter driver so just select our Wi-Fi network Enter the code. Here we go. Maybe we can customize our settings now. So let's just go through this quickly. So you definitely don't want to use express settings. Off, 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 off. Off, 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 off. I'm gonna just let that do its thing. There you go, it's the one of the only ways you can make sure that Microsoft aren't gonna start tracking you all of a sudden. And of course it being Windows, it has to go and fetch some updates before it lets us do anything. So we'll probably be sitting here waiting all night for this to work. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, now the updates are finished, we can select what we're gonna do from here. So we're gonna join the domain locally. Probably won't actually hook this machine up to my domain. All we do is just gonna make a local account. So we're just gonna call it iMac. Set a password. and just let that do its thing now. Oh, I definitely bet it does. It also reboots when you don't want it to, so that's very helpful. Oh wait, oh God, it's doing it again. It never ends. I've just installed the operating system. Oh, well that was an anti-climax, it actually went worked. Right, okay, that caught me by surprise a bit, but there we go. Okay, so I've copied the support software to this amazing flash drive, marks with a number two on it. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea neither, but we're going to go and put that into the iMac and see if we can install the drivers. 
Okay, so let's just bring it up. Bootcamp setup. And let's let that run through. And one thing, of course, I forgot we need to write in compatibility mode, of course. Okay, so I actually did forget we do need to actually run this in compatibility mode for Windows 7. So we'll select that. And then we'll just run it like that. Now we're going to actually work this time. Uh, yeah, we'll have that then. And we'll allow it to install. Okay, so Bootcamp has finished installing and it's probably going to want me to restart the machine. And one thing I do right now know is that the sound has just started working. So we can hear the world's most annoying sound. Of course, any IT class student would realise how annoying that sound gets after a while. So we just let that restart. And it's probably going to go install a mother load of updates as well. As this screen so commonly shows. It's been updates after updates, I tell you. Okay, it's just rebooted, and the first thing I definitely want to say is that the graphics are still not working. So that's definitely something we're going to have to address. So hopefully we can go on the internet and find some appropriate drivers to use. But yeah, the graphics are still not working as intended. And we should be seeing that the iMac is currently using the basic display adapter. Indeed it is. Okay, so after all that, it seemed that they were not the correct drivers to use, but I've found some alternative drivers. And we'll see what they do for us. So we'll just navigate to them. Okay, so it says we've got the mobility radian. I'm not sure if that's gonna work for us. Let's see if we can find something else here. There we go, Radeon X1600 series, Microsoft Corporation WDDM. We'll ignore that. And hopefully this will install. And of course it's not gonna install. It doesn't support this version of Windows. Okay, so I've just tried to install the Mobility Radeon X1600 graphics drivers and it appears to actually have worked. Uh, let's close that. You see, window movement's nice and smooth. We're now running at the full resolution, 1440 by 900. All of the animations in the start menu appear to be nice and smooth as well. Okay, so now that Windows 10 is installed and running on this machine, let's have a quick look at what works and what doesn't work. So let's try adjusting the volume. Of course, the Apple keyboard volume controls work absolutely perfectly now. We have the bootcamp software volume indicator there. One thing I have noticed, it's probably not going to do it now. No, the start menu does glitch out quite a bit actually. Some of the times what will happen is the some of the labels on some of the programs will just completely disappear and it's just, a, just an absolute mess. The drivers may be of an issue here, but that's definitely something that needs to be taken into consideration. It's not doing it right now, but I bet it will do it at some point during this video. Okay, so we're just gonna browse UGB. So I'm just gonna to go to my channel. And we're gonna see if we can watch a video to see if it works. So we'll select our latest video then. We'll turn the sound up a bit. And there you go, as you can see, some of the menu controls do like to disappear. So if you jump on the start menu, as you can see, there you go, it's doing it here. Whether I'm sure if you install like an alternative start menu, like classic start, for example, I'm sure you can work around those issues. But yeah, the video is playing. Currently playing in 480p. Let's give it onto a bit of some motion. Ignore that. 
Seems to be playing that pretty well, actually. Turn the sound a bit. So this is a i5-2400 system. Let's back it up to 720. One thing I'd definitely like to say, this is definitely working better than what Mac OS did with this. So we'll try and use full screen. Uh, it's got a 500 gig white solid state boot drive and two terabytes. Of and there we go, it is struggling. Storage. So the main purposes of this server is to be a file server. Lots so of glitching going on here. Files on it. And it's also used for remote desktop. Let's see if we can whack it back down to 480. So now I'm going to give you a quick talk. So even then, at 480p, it's actually it quite glitching quite a bit. But to be honest, if you're going to be watching YouTube on this machine, it's definitely better to stick with the non-full screen option, so which does work stage. absolutely fine. And as you can see there, I've just installed the classic start menu, which does function a lot better than what the built-in start menu does. As you can see, that's still having some glitches there. But this will work perfectly all the time. And you can definitely use that to perform your start menu actions. But yeah, generally all round usability is excellent of the machine actually, surprising for its age. You can see I'm zipping around the interface here. Everything's nice and fast. I don't know how long that's gonna be for, but there we go. Close that. Classic start menu works better than the built-in one, and it all works reasonably well. One or two slowdowns here and there because of the age of the machine, definitely. But for its age, it does work pretty well. Of course, there's going to be no games built into the long-term servicing branch version of Windows 10, but there we go. It does work reasonably well. And there we go, we've learned that it's definitely possible to run and install Windows 10 on an early 2006 iMac. While it does work, and it does work well in most cases, there are a couple of issues with the graphics. But if you install the classic start menu, you definitely can well, ignore them and work your way around them. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.